If you're sending a file to print, it's likely a PDF, right? But how often are you actually double checking that PDF before you attach it and send it? Hmm? Well, the Adobe Acrobat print production tool is where you do that. And it is especially valuable when you're doing specialty finishing and spot colors. Plus there's a few other little fun, cool things in there that'll make you feel like a print pro. Let me show you how to use it. So you just finished designing your PDF. You open it up in Acrobat to double check it. So you're going, okay, I'm looking at it. It's got crop marks. It looks like it's got some bleed. If you're stopping there, you're not double checking your file hard enough. It's really important to double check your file. So the way to do that is with the print production tool in Acrobat. Here I have this fun little postcard shenanigan that I've designed that has two specialty finishings. I've got a holographic foil that I want here, and a blind emboss. We have a spot color Pantone for the purple. We've got a regular just CMYK process for the image and a little bit of the black here. Now, I'm gonna use output preview. That's all you need. It has the goods for every designer in order to check if their file is print ready pre-flight, edit object, all that stuff. It's more pre-press. It's more what your print shop people will actually deal with and get your file ready for print, print, print. Um, but if you wanna dive into that and learn more about it, please do, do the things. But we are dealing with output preview. It's all we need. It's got the goods, like I said. So simulate over printing is always, is usually turned on automatically. Um, it's a great thing to check because I have on many occasion accidentally had stuff set to overprinting um, because I grabbed some swatch somewhere or something and I'm like getting my final file and I'm missing objects on it or I don't know. The, it, it's a weird, it's a weird thing to accidentally have stuff overprinted. And that's why we have this on to check it. But it's also very useful when I'm checking things that need to be overprinted, like specialty finishing. And I can see one of them is working properly right now. And the other one isn't. And so we're going to get into that when we get into that. So we'll leave that there. But the first thing I'm going to check is my separations. Um, I'm going to go and play in here. I can see my process plates. I can see my cyan, magenta, yellow, black. And I can see my spot layers. My spot color it traditionally is this Pantone. So that is in the right place. Great. The other spot swatches I have are for my specialty finishing, as they should be. So they are in the right spot. I have holographic foil. I have this emboss. Love it. So when I start kind of taking a look, I can click through. I can see, okay, cyan, magenta, yellow, all these different layers. If I go the reverse and I, actually, what am I doing? Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that this black is in all of the layers here. It's supposed to be just 100% black. It should be just the 100% K black. So the fact that it's showing up in all the different layers leads me to believe that this is probably an RGB black, but it's in CMYK process plates, I know. But in Illustrator and on other ways, um, Illustrator usually will sometimes accidentally convert a color from RGB to CMYK and those blacks just stay at really high coverage. So that's the biggest culprit. Like that's the huge thing that we always like run into is people submitting files with RGB blacks by accident. But this is how I can tell and we're gonna go through as to like further how we can tell. Um, yeah, which is right now. <laughs> when we talk about total area coverage. Um, total area coverage. So when we are dealing with a CMYK print, because you know there's some stuff that's going to be high coverage like this image 300 is max 300 max and the fact that this image is sitting in there okay but this should not be this high coverage which we said because it's pulling in all these other layers i already knew it was suspect 300 is crazy for this little black bar situation that i don't need me hovering over it you can start to see the different color layers that you have it's really handy. Um, so on, yeah, where, where I'm looking, let me tell you that. Um, over here, you can see these percentages. When I move my cursor around, you can start to see that they are changing different values. My spot color has zero process layers. That's great. 
This black that's underneath here, do you see how it has an 88% cyan, 76, 69, 96? That's crazy coverage. And at the very bottom, it has 329% coverage. Insane. You don't need that. It's going to cause so many problems when it hits press. So you will need to go into your file and change that in the swatches before you go to print. So this total area coverage thing is handy for that. It's a really quick way to identify those RGB blacks, which are so common, and just any other color mixes that might be over the top. And then the next cool thing that we're going to look at is just the paper color and all this other stuff. First thing, showing art trim and bleed box, that's also good because you're going to be able to see, did I set my trim? Do I have my, my little crop marks in the right spot? Um, so good to have those switched on. The next thing is going to be simulating paper color. You can choose to have simulate black ink on. Um, that is handy as well because it's showing that more muted side, right? Like screens are backlit with white. Real paper is not. So I need those to be kind of more muted. And you can do simulate paper color here, which is going to be kind of more true to that like muted 50% brightness look. So it's really good to kind of get that full view of what you're expecting to do. Now, when we set background paper color, that's where it's really fun. Um, so let's say you're printing on like a, a cream. Let's find like a, like a creamy color, right? Like, uh, what is, no, there, there we go. Oh yeah, there we go. That's, that's the things that we need. Okay. Um, your paper color is going to affect your design. And so this is a really simple way to just sort of see how some of my colors start to shift, right? Like my purple sort of shift. So having that turned on there is really handy. Um, and I did say there was another little mistake. So I'm going to show you that. And it has to do with the overprinting. When we look at these spot layers, so we talked about the Pantone. Pantone's looking good. The emboss layer was properly overprinted because it's not reversing out of the background CMYK layer and the spot layer and all that stuff. Because I just want it to be a blind emboss, there should be no print being affected. And then the same with this holographic foil. I want that holographic foil to just be a holographic foil. I want it to look cool. I want it to look like this with no print underneath it. And if I don't have this set to overprint properly, my design's gonna print like this. It's gonna have that white and trying to line up a holographic foil and that white edge misregistration, crazy. So I'm gonna go back and make sure that this hollow foil layer and item is set to overprint. And when I'm in there doing that, I'm also making sure that my RGB is set to that 100% black layer. So that is Acrobat print production output preview. It is so important to double check those files. And this is such an easy way to do that. I hope you had fun getting a little geeky with that print production tool. Now that your PDF skills are straight fire, you clearly enjoy leveling up. And what better way to level up than to make more money in your graphic design business? Huh, there's a video.